folks. Just getting set up ready for our afternoon's activities. Lots more fun and games to come. Uh, just while we're waiting, I want to just give you a little uh, tour around the environment um, so that you're a bit more familiar with uh, the various boxes you have. And I think everybody has found the chat area. Um, but there's a little picture of it on the slide. <laughs> Thank you, Heike. <laughs> it's great to have friends. <laughs> um, so you can chat to each other, as you've probably discovered. You can also pass notes between each other. And should you have conversations with lots and lots and lots of people, then you'll see there is a, a couple of little arrows to the right-hand side of the bottom of the tabs that will open up additional um, personal chat boxes should you be sending lots of individual chat messages. Uh, so you can chat to the room through the room tab. You can chat to an individual by finding their name on the participants box and then just opening out the, um, the dialog box to the right hand side of their name and going down to send a private chat. Uh, so that's how to get a message. I'm going to send a message to Elena because it's so nice to see her here. And um, you can chat to a moderator directly. At the very top of the participants list, you will see the moderators. So you'll see myself. And uh, for, the, for the first part of this afternoon session, Elizabeth and Elwyn will be moderating. And should you wish to contact them and say, how do I X, Y, or Z, you can do so by sending a private chat directly to them. They'll do their best to help you. Um, or they'll refer you to where, where you can get help should you need any technical help. And let's come back into the room. Hello. Yes, I saw somebody's just arrived. Natal, uh, no, um, is this Nat Natalia, perhaps? Um, perhaps you could tell us, Natalia, lovely, good to see you. Hi, Natalia, can you tell us where you're from, where you're, where you're joining us from? Perhaps you can type that into the text chat and we can get to know you. From Latvia, wonderful, excellent. Okay, so we're stretching quite a distance today. We're, um, we're meeting up uh, with folk from New York, from Australia, Latvia, Germany, uh, plenty in the UK and in Europe too. Good to see people um, coming back from their lunch. I hope you had a good lunch. I hope you shared your lunch with us virtually. <laughs> um, Rob O'Dowd is now on his way back to, um, to Spain. He can't stay with us this afternoon. He has to catch a flight back to Spain, unfortunately. Well, unfortunately for us, but fortunately for him to return to his home. And uh, hopefully he will catch up on the Google Plus community at the end of the day as well, where we'll be pulling together some of the activity that's been happening in social networks around Quill 2 as well. Uh, thank you. Who's just done that? Let's just change that. Uh, so the other, the other important areas really of the interface, just to make sure that you know, is particularly if you've just joined us, you will need to run the audio setup wizard. You'll find that at the very top left hand menu underneath tools. And if you open tools, you go down to audio, audio setup wizard. So Natalia, you need to run that just to make sure that uh, you can hear us okay. And if necessary, and if you want to talk, we can hear you too. And um, you've also got this participants room. So on my slide here, the participants block is empty. But obviously, in reality here, we've got about 30 people in our room at the moment. And to the right hand side of the participants block, you can see the whiteboard tools, which are enabled at the moment uh, for everybody.
Okay. Great. Okay, we're starting to come back into the room. If you think you're about ready to uh, get going for the afternoon, perhaps you would just choose the either the smiley face from the emoticons under your name or the yes no tool and just give us an idea that you're ready to get started again. Alice is ready for us to get going. That's all good. Yesterday, Heike, the number of participants was about the same, around 30 or so participants. Great, we're getting lots of smiley faces, people getting ready to go, getting ready to start again. Uh, and the, uh, yesterday the day was run at Coventry University, and today we're based at Warwick, but obviously running everything online. Okay, I think we're about ready to go. So I'll tell you what we're going to do at the beginning of this activity. Um, what I'm going to do is to showcase some examples of networks that are already very, very successful at um, attracting teachers who want to learn more digital skills, want to increase their digital skills, uh, teachers who want to um, interact with other teachers uh, or who are connecting their classrooms with other classrooms at a distance. Uh, now in order to do this what I've done is I've met up um, earlier this year with some really uh, great examples of thriving telecollaborative networks and they talked to me and we made um, a video clip using this Collaborate tool. Uh, we made a, a video, cl video clips of those interviews um, for them to share with you. Now I've put them together onto a playlist. I'm going to put that playlist into the text chat now um, so that you can play it on your own computers. That just saves me streaming it from here. I think it will be... Uh, easier for everybody to watch that playlist at their home. So if you want to click on that link and then give us a tick in the text chat once you can see that you're on YouTube and you're on a Warwick language playlist for Quill. So a smiley face or a tick just to let us know that you're, you're there and you've got that playlist in front of you. Okay, they're starting to come in. Thank you. I see some ticks going on. Got it, Sarah's got it, great, Elena's got it, wonderful. Some people are not back from lunch yet. <laughs> okay, so you can see you've got a playlist in front of you. Heike's got it, so we're ready to go. Marina's not going to be joining us this afternoon for the time being because she's busy driving uh, Rob off to the, to the airport. Uh, Jeanne, I'm not sure if she's back yet from lunch. Okay, gradually I'm seeing those numbers tossing up. Yeah, you're finding you've got another window. So okay, we're doing some surfing through windows here. If you're not used to that, this is another part of the richness of a, your telecollaborative experience. Um, managing multiple windows, which can be quite a challenge um, for, for many people. It's not as straightforward as uh, as we might think. And on that playlist, I'm going to just show show you this. So let's just show you this on the screen as well. Um, okay. So I'm just changing that to show you what you should have now in another window on your own computer because you're going to watch this on your own computer. So here you've got a playlist. And this is on the Warwick Language YouTube channel. And you can see we've got three interviews coming up. Now, Heike will be our first person up. Heike is a very experienced telecollaborative teacher, and she's in the room with us. So she's going to be able to answer your questions and, and talk to you live as well. 
Heike was hugely disciplined with her interview, and so you've got a very professional interview job coming on here. And we, we, my brief was to try and get everybody down to a five-minute interview. We nearly got there with Heike. We got six minutes. I'm afraid I failed drastically <laughs> with the others, and we creep up to eight minutes and then to 12 minutes on the e-twinning. However, you've got a bit of uh, uh, a flavour, I hope, of, and a feel as you watch these for the people involved. So Heike's interview is around six minutes long, and I'm going to switch my sharing off now because we're going to. I'm going to let you click on that and watch it. There are four films. We are going to watch three of those at this stage, uh, Tatiana. So if you want to click on the first one. If you want to click on the first one, you can start to watch that, and I'll just pop the timer on, uh, and we'll know that in about five minutes or so you'll be finished. But when your video finishes, um, let us know by just typing into the text chat or put a tick. Natalia, it looks as though you finished watching the video. Great, thank you, Rosario. And Sarah. Okay, that's looking good. That looks as though we've nearly finished watching. Obviously, the videos are also shared. The playlist is shared on the Google Plus community, so you can come back and watch them later. But we have the wonderful opportunity of having Heike in the virtual room with us. Um, so, Heike, I'd be delighted if, uh, let me just turn your mic on, that would help, um, if you would talk to us a little bit live and uh, tell us a little bit more about your excitement, particularly around synchronous. Uh, you may want to run the um, audio setup wizard if you haven't done already, but tell us a little bit more about why you think the synchronous is so powerful as well. Great, thank you. Um, I'm going to have to increase the volume a little bit if, if I'm too low, but uh, That's fine. Tracy, you're just doing such a great job in moderating. It's just so wonderful to listen to you. Really, really great. <laughs> Couldn't yeah. do it without your help and direction. Do you, do you want to switch on enable video as well, and then I can switch on my video? Ah, uh, sure, yes. Yes, of course. Yeah, you're going to put your webcam on as well. I'm going to be looking out for the plant behind you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's, there we go. Okay, so just just to uh, reiterate, well, you've heard it in the video before, the main, um, say, telecollaborative efforts in, in getting language teachers together has been through synchronous means, that is through webinars, web conferences, and in Second Life, and I hope very much you join us this evening, later on today at 5 p.m. British time, um, on Edunation, because we have a guest speaker who will be talking about a larger telecollaborative uh, work that he is doing with uh, about a thousand schools in the south of England, uh, connecting kids, uh, teenagers from 13 onwards, uh, connecting them uh, in order to learn languages, learn French, learn um, other languages, Italian. And uh, he's been doing fantastically in Second Life, and I'm so glad that he agreed to join us this evening. Um, so, yeah. If you have questions, please feel free. That's great news. Thank you. I know some people perhaps are still waiting for the end of their video to finish, so you might want to switch the video off, or you're going to get lots of voices, <laughs> which is going to yeah. be a bit confusing. You'll hear me twice. <laughs> <laughs> which is good. <laughs> um, right, okay. So, yes, thanks, Elizabeth. <laughs> my crispy thing was disturbing people. <laughs> I realized I left my mic on. Sorry about that. Um, uh, this, is a, this is our first online conference, to be fair, so we're still learning too. Um, do we have anybody, anybody with any questions? Sarah, yes, I think, you, I think you, you raise a very important point. People are scared of synchronous technologies, and I think those of us in this room are experiencing all of that scariness. I've had messages saying, is my webcam on? You know, how do I control this? What's going on? I've had uh, messages around you know, the, having two windows with audio coming through at the same time. People do find it scary. I think you're absolutely right. So we need to support that. 
and certainly at the beginning yeah, as the I find also though, I find um, that people are more experienced with these kind of environments now than they've ever been. Um, there's a great, great learning curve definitely to be done, especially as a moderator. But uh, if you attend sessions, you'll find that uh, they're wonderfully interactive, they're wonderfully engaging, um, you learn so much. It's like in a real conference with the added value that you can do from home. Yeah. Yes, so Angela captures it quite nicely as well. It's like being an acrobat. You're jumping through virtual spaces. You're all over the place. You're, you're texting in one box. You're watching something else. But you don't have to do all of these things. You discover them at your own pace. You don't have to jump in at the deep end. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty like driving a car, yes, or patting your head and rubbing your tummy at the same time. <laughs> all of these things <laughs> stretch us. They stretch our, um, our abilities. But I, you know, I've, I've always felt that stretching and learning is a good thing. To be in a learning space as, as a teacher is a great thing. It helps to inf inform. I'm not going to go with doing the splits, Elena. <laughs> I'll leave that to you. <laughs> um, you, you can can I ask that you, Teresa? You... Yeah, sure. Sorry, or go ahead. Has anybody in the room already been using this environment to teach a language? Um, I have, and there are people within Warwick who have, and Sarah's been using Skype, yeah, and Elena has been using Skype, yeah. So, I mean, I think I think you're absolutely right, um, Heike. These things are getting more acceptable, more usual, uh, and easy to use. The reason we've gone with the solution we've got, well, there are multiple reasons why we've gone for the solution we've got, but one of the most important ones is the is the bandwidth issue, and that's an important one, and financial issues. Um, the tool that we we use actually uses specific codecs that lowers the demand on bandwidth, which means you can connect with people um, in lots and lots of uh, different situations using different machines. Um, so we've been able quite successfully to get everybody into um, Blackboard Collaborate today, and that's worked very well for us. The reliability uh, is very important. And yeah, we've got people with a wide uh, knowledge of different tools here, obviously. Um, Adobe Connect and Blackboard Collaborate are very similar looking tools, but obviously Collaborate is built for education. Um, Adobe has a wide range of, um, of uh, markets, if you like, that it looks to, to capture. These things are becoming more usual, and increasingly, you know, they're becoming apps on phones as well. And there are there, there's at least one person I think today who's participating with in the event on um, an iPad. Uh, so we are seeing a change and a shift. And one of the things that there's certainly some uh, telecollaborative qualities I think that come out of uh, effective facilitation of these sorts of environments for, for teaching and, and I think Heike and the other videos that we're going to see today um, demonstrate professionals who have a good range of skills that support the rather uh, scary journey. Uh, into these sorts of uh, these sorts of environments, and Sarah, yes, Sarah, can I, yes. can I, and this is why I, I'm, I'm actually a fervent believer because um, for this kind of like the online conference today, for those who would like to get started with these kind of uh, synchronous communication tools, it's a wonderful opportunity to just sit and listen. And well, and watch the chat. I mean, it's not not really rocket science to watch some slides and and listen to a speaker and and then watch the chat. But um, and to get the uh, um, the feeling of how it feels like to learn as a a teacher, <laughs> teacher being a learner, and in this environment. And uh, my experience has been that over the years that I've done web conferences, and I've managed to get more than now nearly. Thousand participants in in these in my uh, were part of my web conferences and six thousand participants were mostly language teachers. Is um, that the uh, the effect of, of being able to sit there and learn and enjoy the content that's been delivered and enjoy the networking that is taking place um, is the absolute start to then already go on and take and then become active webinar users 
Uh, did you find that as well, Teresa? You're yes. such a great moderator. Are you teaching language teachers to use this environment? Uh, absolutely, yes we are. And, and the tool that we've got is actually integrated within our Moodle environment, so it's very easy to set up. And, uh, tutors can set, uh, set an, a synchronous session just with a drop and add an activity within Moodle. And, uh, and it, Students literally just follow the links in order to get it going. So, so it's it's completely integrated in our approach in the, in terms of our use of our online environment. That there will be these, there are these facilities to connect at a distance for a synchronous session, even if it's just a quick revision. Um, but the integration is pretty key uh, because actually that means that this is something that we expect and that we support. Um, so that's why we, we've chosen chosen to use this. Um, Sarah, I've just enabled your mic and your webcam. I don't know if you want to come in as well and, and talk to us, um, because to have uh, Sarah Guff in the room with us as well, I haven't had a chance to introduce you really, Sarah. Um, Sarah Guff was a, a collaborator with uh, Rob and Francesca Helm on the Intent project. The, the report is, is shared with you in that uh, Google community. Uh, and a researcher in this area has been very active in this area for a long time now. Was at the University of Padua, I think, originally, and, uh, and is now at the Sunny, Sunny Suny Center. Um, in New York, yeah. please do share with us as well. Good morning, everyone. I, I hope you can hear me. Oh, good morning. Hi, we can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, <laughs> okay. that's great. Um, yeah, I was at, in Padova, and now I'm in New York at the Coil Center at SUNY. Um, Coil is um, collaborative online international learning, and it's uh, similar to the project I did with. Rob and Francesca, it's just that it also goes beyond language learning. Um, but one of the issues that I just brought up in the chat was the issue of, of whose environment to use because we've noticed particularly when you're doing exchanges between the U.S. and other countries around the world, there tends to be, um, well, there, there has to be a discussion at the beginning of any kind of exchange as to who's system you're going to use because, for example, right now um, what we're saying and what we're doing is being recorded and that's going to remain on the Warwick, you know, server and so um, these, these are issues that I really think need to be discussed more in depth, especially when you're, when there's kind of an <clears throat> imbalance of, okay, when you're working within Europe, and um, countries are kind of politically on the same level, it's one thing. When you're working with um, countries where there's already kind of a, a power distance, um, sometimes it's better to use uh, free tools or open tools um, to get away from that sense and feeling that there is a stronger university who's providing the software is going to keep all of the content that the students have produced when the exchange is over. Um, mm. So, I, I, I can kind of, let me give you a little context in terms of sort of what, how we're working today here. The, the session is recorded, clearly we wanted that to be the case in order to, to share it afterwards. Um, and people were made aware when we pressed the recording button that we were about to record. Um, but all of the content we're producing is uh, is going to be made available as open educational resource. So that's very much the, the approach here. Um, yeah. So what we're doing here is uh, generating a resource for people who haven't managed to communicate during the day or join us today, yeah. and, uh, and also for people who are learning about telecollaboration. A platform for those of you who have researched on the subject, a platform for those who are interested and want to find out more and want to experience it. So yeah, I think these are all issues that need to be discussed, but um, certainly in the UK, the, uh, the atmosphere is very much around open educational resources and, and free sharing. Um, of of the product, so we we use within Warwick at the Language Centre we use an open source product called um, Kaltura to make video available. Um, so you'll see that embedded in our sites, but also as as you've seen already, our video is available on 
YouTube, the videos we're making on the YouTube channel. Uh, well, another yeah, tool that actually, actually nobody put in the chat and it comes to the UK is Flash Meeting. And I love Flash Meeting because it automatically records everything and it's a free tool and it's easy to use even with low bandwidth. And has anyone, I'd be curious to know if anyone's used Flash Meeting. Flash Meeting isn't one I've used. I've used um, with IQ, which is um, taking off over here. But these these things, are okay, Hikers up there, and she's used it before. There are going to be more and more of these things around. And of course, Google Hangouts is another obvious one that um, that is around uh, and and being used. Clearly, you know, within a, within an institutional setting, there are various demands that you have to think through when you make these things available. So. Um, when we make our choices, we have to reason uh, on the lines of that, you know how much demand there's going to be and uh, how secure the uh, transmissions are going to be and this sort of thing. So we have you know whole procurement things that we have to go through institutionally in order to to make any uh, decisions on these sorts of things. But I do think, as everybody's saying, this is going to become more of the norm. As we'll see in Google Docs, we can. Um, we can do all sorts of things these days that we weren't able to do telecollaboratively very easily in the past. Yeah, it's amazing so how fast of, things <laughs> It's moving very, very quickly. It really is moving very, very quickly. Um, Heike, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to in encourage people to, to take a look at the second video now, which is, um, let's have a look. Let's just share that link again. In video, or I nearly finished watching the video learning with the world rather than about the world. I tell you, Michael Graffin is, is a fabulous person. If you haven't come across him, uh, M. Graffin, at M. Graffin on Twitter. Uh, and the Global Classroom Project is a fabulous project. Um, I hope you've really seen some interesting stuff there. You've got, uh, let me just check that link, Heike. It's, uh, no, that's, no, I will send you the link. I, I work for the Global Club, well, work for, I'm not employed by, but I, I am a, a, a freelance mentor for the Global Classroom Project. Um, and what that means is that I help, I moderate their Twitter chats. Um, let's just find you the right link. Um, there we go. There we go. I'll just share that with you in the text chat. So this is the wiki uh, space. In fact, that was last year's project. I should take you to where they are this year, really, shouldn't I? Here we are. That's a better one. So it's a WordPress project. They're really moving out and extending this project. Um, it's a primary school project. So if we're thinking in higher education, wow, we're being revolutionary. Take a look at what's happening in primary schools. <laughs> and it really makes you think. These are primary school children connecting at, at, at all levels of, yeah, I think you're right, Sarah, at all levels of the, of the spectrum of collaboration from the exchanging physical objects through the post at one end to the uh, synchronous uh, Twitter chats it has pr proved the most useful for them. Uh, and if you ever do a search, I think it's usually the third Saturday, Sunday of every month, and you put the hashtag global, global classroom into the, in, um, into the text chat, and into the Twitter, sorry, I've just put it into the text chat for you. Um, then you'll see some of those conversations. We have great conversations around education, and those are archived and they're made available in the Global Classroom archives so that uh, teachers can see what people are doing. Uh, let me try the latest link that I've just put in. Um, there you go. The first one didn't work, but this one seems to work fine. Um, so that's, uh, that's another source of inspiration for us to think on. The third source of inspiration I think um, Sarah will be very familiar with and uh, you may, um, Elena also may be aware of. So that's back to our uh, YouTube playlist again. And this time, and I'll share the direct link with you. So by now you're getting used to this 
process of moving from one video in and out of the classroom. So here's the third video. Um, this time that is um, uh, the e-twinning network. So we've moved through a range of accents. You're now moving into Geordie uh, as language tells you about her project. See people are finishing the video. I'll just give it a few more minutes to see maybe some more smiley faces or ticks to show she finished or something in the chat room. Great. Yes. Sarah, it's, it's brilliant to have a researcher in the room who, who is so engaged in all of this sorts of activity because we know that the quality of the interactions that we're getting from Sarah at COIL is going to be great. It is schools, Hiker. It's not higher ed particularly. It, it is aimed at schools. The e-twinning platform was created for schools, and in the US it was the e -PALS platform, I think. I know Simon recently went to um, a conference around that. Yeah, thanks, Sarah, for that confirmation. Um, but I know behind the intent uh, team's thinking was, you know, we need this to exist in higher education as well, hence the unique collaboration um, site and the the presentation of a portal, the creation of a portal, um, which is uni collaboration. Um, now there I, there is a, a short video that presents uni collaboration, and and I think we will show that as well shortly. But uh, before we do that, because we've all been off watching different videos and uh, in different places remotely, and they were doing everything remote remotely. Uni collaboration, yeah, it is unique in that it is it is for higher education. So it's your um, your point of connection to find tele collaborative partners for your classes, and it's certainly going to help people develop. Yeah, it's good to see Belinda that people feel that it's got great potential for higher education. I certainly think it has. Um, it started as an EU project, but I think we can legitimately say it's gone global. I can see people signing up for it, but we need more and more and more people to sign up so that that database gets bigger. We need to be able to, to link up with uh, Mandarin learners and uh, learners of Japanese. You could just see that uh, that platform really showcasing the various things that can happen that can make education and language learning and online intercultural exchange really vibrant. Uh, 